Well, just wanted to let folks know that we're waiting on uh, the fourth edition of my book, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism, that I'm working hard on it. Um, the good news, the really good news, is the absolute very last secret of magnetism, um, which I kind of understood, but I didn't, understood, didn't understand fully until I figured it out about a little over a month ago. Um, how uh, one uh, can uh, uh, reconcile the nature of uh, identical um, Gaussian readings, both centrifugal and centripetal on either side of a magnet, and yet still have it be the case that uh, there is rarefaction and compression uh, phase shift uh, between either pole of a magnet. And it was sitting there, magnetism is so divinely simple, human stupidity is so vast and so incredible that, you know, even it was just, uh, you know, the forest, you know, I couldn't see the forest. I mean, I, I've, I saw 99% of the forest, but the very last principle that was bugging me, and I understood it, but the full realization of how I was able to reconcile, you know, uh, identical... Um, identical readings on either side of a quote-unquote pole of a magnet uh, by uh, using a Gauss meter and yet still, as I proved in my seed experiments, I show that exposure to between North and South Pole, as Rawls and Davis proved, uh, you know, decades ago, you know, it's completely different between poles. There is an absolute phase shift. There is rarefaction on the North and there's compression on the South. The seeds and animals and critters and rats and worms and so forth that are exposed to the south pole of a magnet. Um, of course, a magnet doesn't actually have poles. So the very definition of the term polarity I will have uh, fully described in the book. I got many hundreds of pages to add to the book, but uh, the one thing, you know, if I croak next year or something, you know, that I'll leave as a legacy is that I will be able to say that I'm the first person in the world to figure out what magnetism is. And uh, that seems stunning to the common person because magnets are in absolutely everything that we use. But we have endless uh, quantifiable explanations of, uh, of uh, the empirical uh, constituents of interactions as pertaining to magnetism. But nowhere, whether it's uh, James Clerk Maxwell, Tesla, Faraday, uh, Steinmetz, or Oliver Heaviside, or even uh, Eric P. Dollard, nobody has ever actually explain what magnetism is. That's actually a known entity as so far as explaining what is magnetism. It has never been known. As the stupid little apes that we are, we know how to exploit fields and forces. But as is the case, the most important word in the entire cosmos, field, has never by any never been described by anybody. Um, it has nothing to do with particles. Uh, you know, the, the cult of quantum is, uh, is a cult of, uh, of atomism. It's based upon uh, absurd abstractions. They know for a fact that there is indeed instantaneous action at a distance. But distance implies magnitude, and space is neither a field nor force. It acts on nothing and does nothing. Tesla, Nikola Tesla himself said this, and uh, as is the case, you know, um, uh, people like uh, Leonard Susskind and the idiot Richard Feynman and the grand fool Einstein, one of the biggest... The guy that's heralded as one of the most wise and intelligent is one of the most stupid. The guy invented nothing that what he no won the Nobel Prize for um, uh, is completely wrong in premise. It's a complete absurdity. The photoelectric effect while his uh, observations were correct, his explanations were totally wrong. Everything that uh, Einstein ever said, as far as uh, C squared, uh, he stole from uh, Henri Poincaré. Everything, there's, uh, Einstein never discovered anything. And uh, C squared is not uh, a principle of, uh, of energy conversion. Uh, there, Tesla said himself that the notion of energy conversion is an absolute absurdity. When an atomic bomb goes off, for example, the entire system is nothing other than a release of tremendous uh, um, uh, force and motion uh, through the release of the atomic system, converting it into uh, smaller constituent units. Obviously, there is uh, 
gamma, electromagnetic emissions, uh, beta, there is obviously non-particle emissions, but that is part of the kinetic system. That's like saying if I drop a trillion, billion, trillion, trillion uh, uh, steel balls on a steel plate, and I create a cacophony of noise that deafens everybody in the room, that there's been a release of energy. It's like, well, no. The only thing that was happened was a release of kinetic energy in the system. It is amazing that we, with our iPads and our digital cameras, we think we're so advanced, and we believe the, these, these, these arseholes with PhDs and whatnot, we think that they're smart, and they're not. All they do is regurgitate the crap before them. The one way to scare the hell out of any of these people, or make them shut up, or make them run away like a scared rabbit, is just to ask them like a child to explain one word not to describe it, because anybody could describe anything, but to actually explain one word, and that one word is field. Nobody has ever defined the word field, and it has nothing to do with particles. Just as there is no energy, Tesla said this was a stupidity doomed to oblivion, the notion that you could convert uh, matter to energy. In the release of, uh, of, a, uh, of a plutonium core or a uranium core, uh, by the way, neptunium is also fissionable, in a nuclear device. All the constituent components of that uranium or plutonium or neptunium are still present, scattered every damn where after the explosion of an atomic bomb, for example. The release of radiation and the release of uh, electromagnet electromagnetism in the pulse is only a release of the kinetic force that is lost by the dissolution of the atomic system, of which there are countless billions within that fist-sized mass. Every constituent of the actual matter itself is still present afterwards, just scattered all to hell all over the place. We're only talking about something this small, but it has with it. It is a, a very simple analogy: is if you had uh, a trillion, billion, billion, billion pocket watches, and each one of those pocket watches was wound far, far tighter than you could wind a real pocket watch and you were able to release the spring tension on all those trillions and billions of little pocket watches and you know, it was just a massive explosion that just blew the piss out of everything there was noise and light and everything went everywhere every little, every little part of every one of those little trillions and billions of pocket watches are still present there's no energy to matter can no uh, matter to energy conversion done at all so you know it's a complete absurdity einstein is wrong um, the notion that uh, there is a uh, matter to energy conversion is an absolute absurdity for which there is not one single empirical evidence, not in any nuclear reactor, nowhere. Now, the release of the kinetic energy in the system is the release of the, uh, the force in motion within that system by liberating it, very simply. Um, as so far as magnetism is concerned, you know, what implicitly brings me the greatest joy in life is actually understanding the absolute simplistic divinity of what magnetism is. The notion that magnetism and gravity and electricity and dielectricity are four different things is absurd as saying that water and steam and ice are three different entities. No, they're just three different modalities of one single field. There is only one field. There's no such thing as gravity. Uh, gravity is nothing other than incoherent dielectric acceleration. Before these little balls become magnets, okay, the quantity is identical before pre-magnetization, identical post-magnetization. The only thing that's actually changed is the quality. The same way a 5-watt light bulb you know, is, uh, is worthless to read by, but a 5-watt laser will burn the back of your freaking eyeball out. It is the quality, the nature of coherency. It is a point non-specific field incommensurability. It would take about a hundred pages to tell you what that is, but it is so simplistic. It is so, so, so simplistic. And the absolute last key of magnetism, understanding the phase variance between the poles of either magnet, and a magnet doesn't have poles, it only has the inverse of, uh, of counter space. See, Mother Nature doesn't draw lines like a human. A human draws a line and goes here and here. This is how Mother Nature draws a line. Right here to here, okay? The uh, geomagnetic precession and the nature of the reciprocating precessional hyperboloid necessitates that as the precession is undergone, since Mother Nature draws her lines this way, humans draw their line like this, okay? They start here, go here, start here, go there. 
Cartesian line. This is how Mother Nature can only make a line. Mother Nature makes no lines like human beings. Mother Nature only makes a line like this, or like this, or like that, okay? Every action, reaction. And it starts up uh, under field coherency, geomagnetic precession, it necessitates a phase shift at a variance of 1 to 1.618. Oh my god, that's 5, that's the golden ratio by the way. But I finally understand now why you have identical, and it makes me so happy because it's the absolute last secret of magnetism and I've got it fully figured out, I've got the formula for it, why you can have uh, identical um, uh, readings on either side of a magnet uh, using, uh, using a, a Gauss meter and yet still have a huge phase shift between either quote-unquote pole of a magnet. Because what defines a magnet and magnetism not in connotation but denotation is field coherency. And you think, well, we already know that as far as the line domains. That's still a description. Understanding the reciprocating processional hyperboloid and what magnetism is, i.e. the dielectric field, the radiation, the inverse of counter space, you know, and understanding what a, magnet is, a magnet is and what, a, what magnetism is in denotation is something that humanity has not known until now. And uh, believe it or not, the fat and bald tattoo freak before you has the first person on earth to finally figure that out. And that is the one thing that has made me most happy in life, and no matter what else I do in life, that will be it, as so far as, you know, the, the peak of my achievement. And uh, I don't have to convince anybody else of anything, but uh, I'm so happy to have finally figured it out, because it literally is the biggest, biggest secret in the cosmos, and I'm so very glad to be the first person to open that door and see what's behind it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you later. I'm working hard on the book, but I only have two hands and there's only 24 hours in the day. So, I got a website and videos and just tons and tons of emails and comments and blah blah blah. So, as there's never enough time, as they say. Luxi Viditas. Catch you later. Bye.